Right. Should we get back into the papers, Dean, this morning? Come on, then. Isabel Barker Let's go. is Isabel. Uh, with us once again. And uh, I promised we'd talk about Declan Rice. Uh, it emerged yesterday that he has been handed a two-game ban by UEFA. Yeah, so this is in The Telegraph and The Times. They both have pieces on the two-match European ban after he called a referee corrupt in the Europa League semi-final defeat by Eintracht Frankfurt last month. I don't know if you guys can remember the video, but mm. it was pretty damning. You know, Rice was in this referee's face. There's a lot of effing and blinding. And, and I remember last time I was on, we were discussing it um, before this this came through, this, this story. I remember, Nat, you were saying, you know, you felt like he really kind of needed to do better. Um, yeah, and of but, but on the flip side, um, Cass was saying he kind of understood how emotional in the heat of the moment you can be as a player and do you kind of sympathize with him then can can you recall a heated exchange with a ref and, and you can sympathize with the situation yeah and worse as a manager i mean <laughs> you, as a manager you'd like anything's possible you can say anything you don't even realize yourself you could say it but if you infer that the referee is being biased or cheating or or is it you question the integrity of the officials automatic ban a massive fine yeah so i learned that quickly as a as a manager but so I've got no sympathy for Declan. Mm. I know he's frustrated, but you can't say that to the referee. Mm. Have you yeah. taken money? I think he said to him, did he? Something like that. Well, it was corruption. He, he yeah. was, yeah, yeah he used it. the word corruption. And I, and I think you're absolutely right to say that because, you know, we can criticise referees and we do. And it happens a lot on this. I do my best to try and actually defend referees and, and some of the, the law changes we've seen and, and some of the subjective decisions it comes down to opinion at the end of the day and what you think a foul is someone else might not think a foul is and so sometimes I feel referees are often criticised unfairly because it's down to their opinion at the end of the day or how they're interpreting the law but if you're going to do what Declan Rice did and, and be caught on camera calling a ref corrupt I'm sorry you just can't do yeah. that it's absolutely ridiculous. And as much as you can say it's the heat of the moment and we can have some sympathy for him, I'm sorry, you can't question, as you just rightly said, the integrity of an official. Because yeah, you can shout rubbish. You're, ref, you're having a nightmare. Ref, shocking. Ref, you shouldn't be refing at this standard. All these things, I've said them all to referees. All managers have. Ref, you know when you're having to go to the ref, how can you see that? What are you looking at? Put your glasses on. How can you... You're giving them everything. You are giving them everything. The minute you say something... Like you're cheating, or have you taken? Have you mm. taken someone given offered you some money? You you know you're going to get a fine mm. and a massive a ban and a massive fine. Yeah, well, one of the things he'd said is ref ref. It's so poor all night. It's been so bad. How can you be that bad? Honestly, you've probably been paid. Is what he alluded to. Um, and yes, he has now been handed that two game ban by UEFA for that rant after their defeat in the Europa League semi final to Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, let's move on to Paul Pogba. And a documentary on him coming out. Yeah, this is this is pretty explosive. And I think the pieces in the papers will divide a lot of opinions. Um, got a piece in The Times and The Telegraph basically implying that, that Pogba's new documentary, The Pogmentary, <laughs> if I've pronounced that right, on Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, which came out yesterday, basically focusing mainly on, you know, the flashness, the money, the haircuts. The Times says... Documentary shows United came second to Brand Pogba by, by Charlotte Dunker there. And Ben Bloom's piece in The Telegraph says Pogba show like him, all style, no substance. But um, there, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see the, the clips yet, but there, there's a strong quote from Pogba on, on the flip side there that kind of says, how can it goes into his time at United? And actually he says, how can you tell a, a player you want you want him and then offer him nothing and he does go into his his time at united and and he kind of defends himself and he says why he became disillusioned with the club the, the way they handled his contract situation he says he texted Solskjaer, said he wanted to progress things they took ages to sort out a contract i just kind of saw this angle on it that that ander herrera in 2019 said the reason why he left was that united longed out his contract talks and, and took ages to do that do you think the club maybe has a bit of a problem with the handling of, of big contracts with, with big players when, when you've got like Phil Jones who's the longest serving player and, and not played for years well, maybe, disaster I mean. the whole <laughs> thing on. Man United are the only club that can give a player away twice and pay 90 million for him mm -hmm. give him away for free twice it's just a disaster and I'm purposely not going to watch that documentary because Man United are like an Instagram team no. football comes second do you talking on the pitch and then you can do as many documentaries as you like. But if you're producing on the pitch, if Salah done a documentary or Mares, 
or Aguero, I watch it. They actually, I admire them on the pitch, week in, week out, earning their wages. When someone's not earning their wages and not producing and then they do a documentary, it just sums it up. So you're you kind of, yeah, you kind of agree with what the the papers yeah. are saying in the sense that it's, it's just about of him, the, what their their yeah, interpretation yeah, of yeah, that documentary, just kind of about his flashness and and, and haircuts and money and things like that, and mm. not not what he's doing on the pitch. But the world's changed. You, like that's the way the world's going. So you can't fight it. It's going to go that way. But you've got to make sure as a professional footballer. I mean, how how would he feel now knowing? I mean, I'd feel gutted if I thought a club paid ninety million for me, and they've given me away for nothing. Twice. Well, I feel, I feel like, uh, what, have I not played well or something? Um, no, you haven't. Well, also, just very quickly, what you were saying there about Ander Herrera saying, well, these sometimes these long, protracted negotiations yeah. put you off in the end, and, and I can sort of see that, and maybe that's an issue with Mane and Salah. You well, know, if you really want me, either? you do the deal. Herrera, he, how can he speak? But, you he know, didn't play well either. Well, okay. <laughs> 